we move on to our next speaker and I would invite Sara to join us here. Sara Corvino is working on, uh, with uh, uh, the SEED Association, which is uh, based in Switzerland. Hello, <coughs> hello everybody. And um, I am here to speak uh, about how we apply digital, we as, a, as an association of SEED, how we apply digital storytelling to uh, the context of, of development in um, different projects and in different ways. So first of all, digital st storytelling is actually useful to enhance development for several reasons. The first one is that it, it can improve the communication skills of the participants to the projects because it uh, brings the participants to, uh, by creating a story, to find ways to express um, their own ideas, their own feelings in a structured way. Uh, and also it, it, has, it enhances uh, the learning development, development of participants because on one way, again, they have to learn the characteristics of stories and storytelling. They have to learn how to uh, write a story, how to um, illustrate it. And, and also to use the digital media, digital technologies uh, available to produce a digital story. And finally, uh, for these reasons, it can be applied to several disadvantaged and dis difficult contexts because, uh, for example, in um, difficult situations, uh, the people can um, talk about their own experiences, talk about their own um, stories and feelings uh, without being forced to describe them directly, which could be very difficult. With storytelling, instead, they can find a way to express themselves in a um, less traumatic way from, for them. And it can also uh, be very uh, cheap and easy to apply. So it, it can be, we, we applied it several times also in developing countries, for example. This is an example of a workshop we did in Mexico uh, in a little town called Campeche by an educational center. These are the educators illustrating the stories together with the students of the center. Um, so the, the idea behind, behind the project is that uh, storytelling produced with digital media um, can enhance the children but also older students and participants' communicative skills and also relational skills because they, well, on one hand, they learn to express themselves, as I told you before, and they also have to work in groups. And so being um, brought to working groups with the support of educators and trainers, they also develop relational skills. So um, working with stories is uh, very useful because it, um, it's, a, an it's an experience that brings participants to express their um, values and ideas. They make them communicate, uh, they make them learn, as I told you before, and they make them work with, with imagination, which is very important because it's, um, it's a way for them to, to start reflecting on their own values, on what is important to them, on the kind of realities they would, they would like, they would desire, and to communicate it to other people as well. Um, by telling the stories they, uh, they work on, participants understand the characteristics and features of narrative um, and how to shape stories in a structured way, how to write them with uh, proper characteristics. And they also learn to use uh, the media, like the um, computer, <coughs> the um, uh, cameras, uh, the um, programs, softwares needed to edit videos and images. And use, they learn to use these media to produce a digital story. And uh, the use of technology is important because it's uh, highly motivating, especially for children. If they, if they can use technologies, uh, they, um, they have fun, and so they, they get engaged in the activities. And in some cases, technologies can also enhance expressive um, capacity of the participants. That, um, they can make them able to express themselves in a way that would not be possible without technologies, especially if the for example, with children who have some um, kind of physical or psychological disability, technologies can uh, support them in expressing themselves. And also since 
um, a digital story can be produced uh, totally with open source application and user friendly, easy to use applications. It is not, not necessarily to have expensive equipment or softwares or programs that can only be understood by professionals. Um, these kind of technologies are, are available for everybody and are easy to use for everybody. And this is the, uh, the in detail, the design of the project uh, of we uh, usually apply. Uh, the first activity we perform is the training uh, addressing teachers to make them able to then work with the uh, students, with the participants, together with the trainers. So, uh, in order to be able to do that, ch teachers can themselves be aware of the characteristics of storytelling and of narratives, and uh, they can also be able to use the technologies needed for this project. The second activity is co-design. Um, which is very important because this um, this project idea is very uh, can be customized and adapted to different kind of contexts according to the participants' abilities and capacities, and also according to the resources available in terms of um, in terms of budget, in terms of technologies uh, available. And so, co-design means um, uh, means fi finding an agreement with the teachers about the most appropriate activities to be performed with participants. Um, the third activity is listening to stories and during this activity uh, both the children uh, the participants and the, the teachers, the educators, uh, listen to stories in order to, um, to get to grasp the characteristics of a um, structured story and in order to be able then to create and write one because then the fourth activity is, for, is um, writing a story, <coughs> structured story, and also um, finding the way to uh, illustrate them, to produce digital images, and also um, vid um, audio files, so they have to record their own voices, telling the stories, and also finding, for example, songs for a soundtrack if they want. And then they have to um, edit the video, so they have to combine the images they have and the audio files they, they have in order to get a complete um, video, digital story. And the fifth act activity is valorization. Uh, by valorization, we mean usually um, organizing an event to, uh, with both the trainers, educators, participants to the project, and also other people um, the idea is to get uh, an audience as large as possible to enjoy all together the, the stories produced. Um, this is very important because, uh, especially for the participants, because when they see that they actually produce something good, something beautiful that can be enjoyed also by other people, um, the self-esteem grows, basically. And this is an example, a moment of the teacher's training. Uh, this is um, we, this is when we apply the project to a primary school in northern Italy. And then the last part of this project is evaluation. Um, we usually divide evaluation into three stages. In the first one, we evaluate um, the teacher's learning and the children's learning in terms of um, expressive capacity, social abilities, and also um, technological skills. Um, and we uh, you usually do that by interviewing the teachers because they are the ones who can um, best identify and notice also the changes uh, in the in the participants. And we uh, we also have the cooperation of an expert, usually a psychologist, who observe observes the situation from the outside and then um, collects qualitative data. The second part of the evaluation regards the project design uh, and it aims at finding um, better ways to um, developing the process and eventually to, um, to make it uh, even more adaptable and customizable. And then we, the last part concerns uh, assessing the changes and improvements that such projects bring to the uh, organization by which we apply the project. And this is again an example of the children uh, illustrate the stories together with the teachers. And finally, the, the 
Um, such projects have uh, bring to several outcomes. The first one is uh, the stories themselves that usually are um, put on digital support um, in, a, in order to make it possible for participants, teachers, and wh whoever wants to have them, to be able to keep the stories and watch them together whenever they want. Secondly, there are the skills gained by the teachers and also uh, by the participants to the, the project, um, skills in terms of uh, technological ability. Um, for the teachers, they, they also gain the ability to design an individual learning path tailored for, the, for each of their participants and also to be able to integrate those learning paths towards a common goal. Uh, and for everybody, there is um, an increased capacity to work in a team both for participants and for educators. And then there is the um, engagement of children and, and also students, mainly because of, um, of the fact that they can work with technologies and they can produce a really tangible and enjoyable object. And finally, uh, there are the improved expressive skills of the participants. Uh, here is an example of another way in which they can illustrate stories. Some, sometimes they, they draw, sometimes they use uh, Lego bricks and characters, sometimes they make pictures. It, it's really, it, can, it can be really creative and adaptable to the situation. And before I was talking about organizational change, and by organizational change we mean um, a stronger peer relationships are established among the um, the educators and teachers because they, uh, they are really brought to work together um, and uh, richer professional in interactions also with uh, organizations outside the ones that, uh, at by which the project is applied because in several um, cases after we implemented these projects the organizations themselves wanted to look for other organizations, other partners to um, implement other educational projects of this kind. And so there is also a, a more positive attitude towards change, which is uh, which cannot always be taken for granted. And again, these are the uh, children and educators in Mexico working together to illustrate a story. And these are all the uh, cases in which uh, seed association applied digital storytelling for development. Uh, we did it with the. Um, uh, Instituto Sant'Angelo, which is a special school in Switzerland where uh, children with uh, disabilities study. We did that with um, uh, Scuola Piccolo Principe, which is a primary school in Switzerland. But we made the children from the primary school cooperate with the children from OTAF, which is an organization where people with um, heavy disability live. So we brought those children from this organization to the school and we, ma and they m we make them working together with the children to enhance integration. And we, um, we applied it to the uh, Pinocchio project, uh, which was about using digital storytelling to promote intercult intercultural dialogue. And so we made, uh, as for the experimentation we made, um, immigrants come to primary schools, one in um, Switzerland, one in northern Italy, to tell traditional stories from their countries, and we made the students work on those stories, um, modifying them mm, in a crea creative way and producing them in a digital format. And then we applied it into educational centers in Mexico and in Croatia. And if you want further in information about digital storytelling for development uh, by Seed Association, you can visit this blog. Um, we regularly post, um, publish posts on our blog and um, also about what we do about storytelling. And if you have any questions or remarks, you can, you can definitely write, write me an email whenever you want. And um, I would like to very, very briefly show you an example of a story produced, if it works, uh, produced by the, uh, by the children in, uh, in Switzerland. I have here an example of a story produced by six years old children. Okay, this one. Un 
giorno una formica rossa che abitava in Burundi decise di andare in cerca di cibo per i suoi piccoli. Ma uscita dal formicaio, nascosto sulla riva di un fiume, ai piedi di un grosso baobab, vide che tutto era stato allagato dalle piogge torrenziali dei giorni precedenti. Mentre zampittava faticosamente sul terreno fangoso, Cercò di arrampicarsi su un grosso ramo, ma cadde nel fiume. Kim si mise a nuotare affannosamente e stava per annegare quando vide passare un grosso uccello. Disperata gridò, aiuto, aiuto, salvami, ti prego, se mi aiuti un giorno ti ricambierò il favore, ti renderò felice. L'uccello le rispose, ma come puoi pensare di aiutarmi tu che sei così piccola e non sai neppure volare? E si allontanò infastidito. La formica, sempre più disperata. Ma se uno ha tutti i video, scusi. I miei piccoli, i miei piccoli. Per i progetti che abbiamo fatto sul nostro blog. Grazie per la tua attenzione.